are you now made perfect by the flesh? And so now we're going back to chapter 4 uh, with, you see where his mind was. He said you came in accepting the gospel, believing the gospel, receiving the spirit. He said you didn't receive that by works. You received that by the hearing of faith. Some people say, well, how do you get the Holy Ghost? You get it by hearing. Mm -hmm. You let the spirit give it to you by faith. It's not a matter of a lot of antics or uh, uh, you know fearful things that you might look and observe, but it's that faith. Mm -hmm. I remember receiving the Holy Ghost and uh, I was praying, kneeling at an altar and I heard God say, stand up and worship me. And I did, and, and when I stood immediately, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, and so it was something that I heard and I believed and I followed what God said. Uh, so he uh, said, did you, did you receive the Spirit by uh, works of the law or by the hearing of the law? can't give you the Spirit. And so, okay, going back here. Then we'll go back to chapter 4. Uh, he said, uh, my little children, back to verse 19. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. So he was talking about a, the first time uh, there was a birthing of them in spirit. And now he's saying, I'm now travailing again for you. Now, all of you mothers, and so it is Mother's Day, and I'm going to touch on this a little bit. All of you mothers know what it's like to give birth the first time, right? Mm -hmm. And you know the travail that it took to bring that across. Jesus said you must be born again. We should, we understand that there's travail in that birth mm -hmm. as well. And so... There's the initial travail, but now he's talking about something else. It may not be a physical travail like it was the first time the mom mm -hmm. gave birth to the child. But you, when you see your child going astray, I, prom I promise you, I think I can say this. I promise you that there's another travail that comes along. Mm -hmm. It's not a travail of physical pain, although it can be in a sense, just as painful, and it might even bring some physical complications to it. But when you see that child going in a direction that uh, you're pretty concerned about, there's a gut-wrenching sense uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of a need to touch God for that child. And here Paul is saying, I travail again for you. Uh, I travail, of whom I travail in birth again, until Christ be formed in you. So it's, it's one thing to initially uh, receive salvation, and there's a travail process there, but it's another thing uh, for you to have Christ formed in you. How many have, uh, uh, I want to say, uh, uh, accomplished this walk with God? You've come to where you know it, and you've got it all figured out. No, no, you have not. And so our walks with God is really a continual process of growth. Mm -hmm. And all of that growth requires some degree of travail. It's not a, it's not a matter of, uh, you know, I, I, I go to church and I do the things that the church tells me to. There's something that on the inside, how many has ever cried out to God, let me see who I am, you know, show me me, show me what's, what, what I'm about, show me what uh, areas that I have uh, problems in. Have we ever look at yourself and say, yeah, I've got a problem in that area. Right. We all probably yeah. do, and all of our problems are various, right. because we are different kinds of people, different personalities. But there is something that God wants to do. Here the apostles looking at the people of Galatia, the church of Galatia, and he says, I want, I'm travailing again for you. So when, when there's a need for growth, or there's a need for even a, a healing, maybe it's, maybe it's a physical healing, maybe it's a, 
uh, an emotional healing, maybe it's a spiritual healing. Some of the church, if not all, uh, need to pick up on that mm -hmm. and, and enter into that travail again uh, for brothers and sisters. It's not about just adding people to the church role, right. you know, travail and see souls one, souls one, souls one. What about the ones that are already here I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Paul was saying, I'm not trying to, uh, he may be trying to reach others, but he, he's saying for the moment, he says, I'm, I'm putting aside that first verse, that first travail that I put forth, and I'm saying there's something that's needful in us today. And, and you see the need of that brother, you see the need of that sister, and you go to prayer for them, and you feel that, that unction of the Spirit of God upon you. I, I appreciate last week, uh, you came up and you began to share the concerns that you had and made even a prayer list out. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, did you feel mm -hmm. that? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm talking about. A mama feels the pain of her children. A mama is concerned about the pain and the things that children are going through. And she, she knows how like the virtuous woman to do a lot of things about that, getting down on her knees and travailing again. And you say, well, I travailed once and they got saved, that's it. No, you travail again, you travail again, you travail again, because that's what the church is about, travailing in prayer for one another. It's not hard to look and see when a person is in need of some prayer. Sometimes they can hide it pretty good. A lot of times, most of the times, they don't hide it very good. And so we know when it's time to pray. And you should, uh, and see, I, I can talk to the men too, because it's not just mamas in the church that tra travail, but here Paul, he's a man, he's travailing. Mm -hmm. And so in the sense that the church is really the mother of us all, mm -hmm. that all of us should have that sense of travail. And I, I don't know, but uh, the, the, it doesn't, uh, uh, how do I say this? We need a more sensitivity to that, that spirit of, of, of travail. When it comes on you and you feel that push, you feel that anxiety, well, I can't say anxiety, it's, it's a burden. And I asked you the other day, I said, how do you feel, describe? She said, well, I'm sad. Uh, and I said, are you sad like and depressed? She said, no, I'm not depressed. I, I have a burden. And this is the spirit of intercession that comes on people. Spirit of intercession lays a burden upon you. And not only does it give you the burden because anybody can feel bad about a situation, but in that intercession, he gives you and is giving you the power to intercede on that behalf. And that intercession is going to have a result of meeting a need. Mm -hmm. and it's pretty pretty neat that you can get into that heaviness, 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 heaviness of spirit, and you begin to pray it out, and pray it out, pray it out. And the next thing you know, uh, you're coming out of that heaviness, and you realize, hey, something has changed in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Something has changed because mama went to prayer. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm saying the, the men as well, mama's in the church are male and female, or mm -hmm. actually there's no male and female, but the church is the nurturer, isn't it? Yes. The church is the, is the, is the thing that takes care of the babies. Mm -hmm. The church is the thing that brings babies into the new birth. Mm -hmm. The church is the thing that goes to prayer when our babies and our brothers and our sisters get into some kinds of problems. You don't need to be overcome by things that happen to people, but you can go to God and say, Lord, lay the burden of their soul upon me. As a mama, as a mother, I need to, to feel what that person's feeling. Do you know that intercession is really that? When God places what they're going through right upon you right, and it's right. not yeah. yours personally right. but you're feeling it exactly. and you're feeling the presence of God saying here this is what they're going through right. this is the burden I'm laying the burden upon you and the Old Testament came to 
Jeremiah, I believe, and, and the people were saying, uh, tell us what the burden of the Lord is. And they came very lightly, I'll put it that way. They weren't really concerned about it. It was more of a, I don't know whether it was a mockery or not that uh, uh, Jeremiah said, burden, burden. He said, what burden? He said, you want to know what my burden is? But he's turning it around on them and said, well, what, what is your burden? Why would just one man have to bear the burden of a country? Right. And so it was to be shared. And he said, burden, burden, what burden? You don't have a burden. You just want to have a conversation about my burden, okay? Mm -hmm. And so Paul is sharing that the burden of the church itself is upon him. And uh, it's a separate and a subsequent burden from the first one that brought them into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Now we're trying to keep them into the kingdom of God. Do you know that people don't always stay in the kingdom? Mm -hmm. Do you know they come in and find out and after a while that uh, this or that or the other thing and they, and they move out and they're no longer part. And so the church wants to be able to sense that and instead of going to gossip about that person, we go to prayer about that yes, person. Right, right. We, we mm -hmm. get that intercession spirit upon us and, and uh, we pray on their behalf. Jesus Christ went to the cross on our behalf. Yes, he he felt the pain. Yes, he felt he the burden. He knew what sin was like because he took it upon himself. That's intercession. Isaiah 53 says, and he made intercession for us. Mm -hmm. And Paul is saying, as I follow Christ, you follow him too. And so, uh, I want to I make sure that we're talking today about motherhood. Uh, but I'm taking the male and female out of the church. And bringing a, a realization to we're all in the position of being that mother, that practical thing that mm -hmm. she was reading about. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord's bringing uh, to our attention this concept of discipleship. And, uh, you know, the Lord sent out his apostles and he, yes, he sent them to baptize, but he also said, uh, making disciples. Mm -hmm. How do you make a disciple of a person? You hand them the rules and say, here, sign the bottom of this page and promise you'll never break any rules. No. You can't do it that way. How do you make a disciple? How did Jesus make a disciple out of the 12? Sometimes I, I, I'm going to tell on preachers. I've heard that you shouldn't be too familiar with the saints as a preacher. Mm. I believe that's absolutely wrong. Mm. Right. Yep. I believe that's a wrong thing to do because people get too familiar with right. you. And there's an old saying, Fil Fil familiarity breeds what? Contempt. Contempt. And so they use that as an excuse. But you know what? I mean, I'm looking at Jesus. I'm saying, yeah, right. He distanced himself, didn't he? Yeah. He was always hiding out from the apostles and keeping them away. And said, mm -hmm. You can't disciple somebody that way. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't get them to live for God uh, by distancing yourself as a leader. Right. Jesus ate with them. Yeah. He traveled with them. He taught with them by his side. They were there to help minister. He was always with his disciples at same. And sure, there were times he would get away mm -hmm. or try to. <laughs> <laughs> and them disciples, I know that's not proper English, but those disciples, when he started to go away, they followed him. What had happened? Was there a rule that said, Wherever I go, you got to follow me? No. Jesus didn't make that kind of rule. What happened to him? This is what happened to him. They fell in love with him. Right. 
And I think the best thing that the church can do in order to stabilize people and stabilize the kingdom itself is just lead people to a place where they love him. Yeah. Yeah. Peter loved Jesus. Right. He didn't realize how weak he was, but when the Lord talked about his crucifixion, Peter was quick to say, I'm ready to die for you. Why? Because he loved him. He just didn't know. He didn't have the strength to do what he thought he was going to do. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, I prayed for you. Now that Jesus is interceding again on the behalf of Pete, Peter. Peter, you're going to be sifted as wheat. Satan's desired to have you, and he's going to sift you as wheat. And Peter had a pretty rocky time there for a while around the time of the crucifixion, the, re the resurrection. And in fact, so much that Jesus had to do special things for Peter to get him back where his head was right. Mm -hmm. When it was time to go tell the disciples that he had risen, he said, go tell the disciples and Peter too. You know why? Because Peter was so hard on himself that Peter didn't think himself worthy. And Jesus had to do something special and, you know, uh, the story in the end, uh, I think it's the 20th chapter of John. The Lord asked Peter, do you love me? And <laughs> Peter said, yeah, I love you. And they asked him again, do you love me? Feed my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Three times he had to instill into Peter that because you love me, and I know you do, Peter, but I want you to, don't let your failure keep you from doing your purpose. Because Peter felt probably that he was a failure. Mm. And so Jesus intercedes for him. When we see people in the kingdom of God faltering, stumbling, having a difficult time, doing things perhaps that we would not, uh, how would I say, uh, condone, it's time to get before the Lord in prayer. Amen. It's time to yes. say, we are going to gather today yes. as a body, as a mama. What, did you, what does a mama do? I think I like what Jesus said. He said, uh, uh, like, a, like a mother yeah, chicken, chicken. Yeah. a mother hen. What she do? She gathers her brood together under her wings. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Psalms 91, doesn't it? under the shadow of his wings, does it say that? And so the church has to be the mama hen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it's not necessarily a glamorous thing, is it? It's pretty hard work, it's mm -hmm. detailed work, it's paying attention to what's going on, mm -hmm. but the church is the mother that's going to keep the babies in the kingdom. Right. Mm -hmm. Jesus taught kingdom parables, and he said, it's like a uh, sower went forth to sow. Right. Do you know what the percentage of people that stayed fully engaged and participating in the kingdom of God was out of that parable? It was 25% made it. 75% didn't. Mm -hmm. they, the, and I'm talking about made it. I'm talking about they bore fruit. Mm -hmm. They may have been around, but these are the ones that bore fruit. Some of them went out because uh, they were offended. The church can offend you, believe me. The church can yep. offend you. Yep. And if you haven't been offended, you haven't been around long. Yep. But uh, Peter said, this is the test of a true Christian. When somebody that uh, hurts you... Uh, and you deserve to be hurt, that's one thing. He said, but when they hurt you and you don't deserve it, he said, that's being a Christian. Uh -oh. mm. Jesus didn't deserve to go to the cross. Right. He's showing us the way. He's showing us something. And I <clears throat> realize I've got... Um, oh, it's okay. What I've done. <laughs> it's okay what I've done. I want to read a little bit more, but that was the verse that I, I wanted to really kind of focus on. And so I'm reading both sides of that verse. Verse 20 says, I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for I stand 
and doubt of you. I looked the word doubt up there, and I know we know what doubt means. But that particular verse, he says, I don't know what else to do. I stand not knowing what else to do. Is that ever a, a point that you can get to? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I don't know what else to do, he says. And so we read on. I stand in doubt, or I don't know what else to do for you. And then he says, uh, tell me. You the desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? <coughs> Verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons. Mm -hmm. The one by a bond woman or bond maid, the other by a free woman. Mm -hmm. One was in bondage, one was free. And it's all about the law. Well, how would you like it really if we decided instead of uh, you know just doing it the way we're doing it, how about we just make a list? <laughs> and you can read the list and say this is what you do to be a good <laughs> member of the, the group nah. how many would like a list no. raise no. your hand I don't want no, no. list <laughs> okay no, I don't want the list no I, no, I, I know I just need it. <laughs> we don't want lists God gave Israel a list mm -hmm. he only put 10 of them on there right and they could not do the list thing. No. I want to tell you, if we had a list, you could not do it. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we shouldn't care how people live or no. how they grow? No. But when Jesus came and he talked about the law, he said, the law is summed up in two things. Mm -hmm. You love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Mm -hmm. And you love your neighbor as yourself. Right. If you do those two things, you will keep all ten of those. And you don't need to get the list out to see what they are. Right. I'd rather live in a home. If I had to do over again, grow up in a family that just loved one another. Yeah. And took care of one another. Mm -hmm. And was there for one another. Nice. Than a family that had a bunch of rules. Now, rules can control, mm -hmm. but is that what this is about, mm -hmm. or is it about love and God? <laughs> Does a mother have rules, and that shows her love for her children? Mm -hmm. She might have some rules, yeah, but more often that love is just understood. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, <clears throat> that's what he's going to go into here, and I'll read quickly on through. Verse, uh, I'll go back to verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bond mate, the other by a free woman. Mm -hmm. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh. Rules are for the flesh. Mm -hmm. And to have a fleshly church make a bunch of rules up. So what happens is this. The ones that obey the rule think they're up here. Right. The mm -hmm. ones that don't obey the rules think they're down here. That's what rules do. But he of the free woman was a, by promise. Mm -hmm. I like promises. I don't like lists. I like a promise. Mm -hmm. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants. Mm -hmm. The one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage or produces bondage, which is Agar or Agar. Verse 25, for this Agar is Mount Zion in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem. It corresponds to Jerusalem. Jerusalem was what? It was where the Pharisees and the Sadducees had all kinds of rules and regulations and these had to be done, this and this and this. And he said, that's the Jerusalem that is. You go back there, you'll see it happening. Which now is and is in bondage with her children. Mama's in bondage, your children in bondage. Mama... It's about a promise, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, right. which is the mother of us all. Mm -hmm. Our mama, our spiritual mama, if we got our heads on the way they're supposed to, is a spiritual freedom. Mm -hmm. right. Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is liberty right? Yep. And when there's liberty, we don't have to worry about rules and regulations. Uh, 
Now, I could just, there's a whole bunch to preach in here. I'm not going to do that, but uh, let's, let's just take a look at the difference between the flesh and the spirit. It says, going in the same chapter, chapter 4 of Galatians, verse uh, 16. Oh, no, let's go back up to 15 because it kind of illustrates what I've been saying. It says, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Ooh. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh, <laughs> for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So you can have a fleshly set of rules, or you can have liberty in the spirit. But watch what happens. But if you be led of the spirit, you're not under the law. Mm -hmm. So if the Holy Ghost is strong on you, you're not going to do any of those things. Right. You're not going to go and do the things that you know are wrong and you don't really want to do, but sometimes you do out of weakness. But he says, if you're in the spirit, there is no law. Why? Because the spirit will always lead you to the right thing and never to the wrong thing. And so you don't have to worry about legalism because all legalism is, is a set of regulations so that your flesh can see what it's supposed to not do and what it's supposed to do. And when it's all said and done, it can't help itself. It's going to do the wrong thing anyway. Reading on, verse 17, for the flesh. Did I read that? Yeah, verse, uh, I'll pick up at 18. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. So he does have a list, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So I could put that as a list, or we could make a list up and say, okay, this is a list, don't do any of these, or you're not going to make it. That's not very effective, and it will not work. Right. Now watch what he goes on to say. But, what is this? The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace. That sounds better, don't it? Mm -hmm. And long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such Against such, there is no law. If the fruit of the Spirit, did I, did I say the wrong chapter? I yes. did. <laughs> I am so sorry. I've been reading from chapter 5. Before your sakes, I will tell you that I started at verse 15. <laughs> and we won't read the whole thing again. <laughs> Hopefully you heard what I was saying. Mm -hmm. read, it, read it on your own. And they that are Christ have done what? Verse 24. Now that we're on the right chapter. <laughs> Why weren't you in the right chapter, you people? <laughs> okay. Verse 24 says what? And they that are Christ have crucified, crucified the flesh with the affections thereof. You got to die, folks. To have liberty, you got to die. Mm -hmm. Because our liberty is in the spirit. Right. And, our, and the spirit is resurrection. Mm-hmm. Spirit is resurrection. In order to have a spiritual resurrection, you have to have a death to self. Right. That's why repentance is the first thing that Peter preached. Right. Repent. Re resurrection comes after we die. Uh, if Verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another or envying one another. So boiling down to it, uh, I'm going to, there's, there could be a longer message here. I'm not going to go longer, but uh, this is the motherhood of the church taking care of one another. 
What did Jesus say? You know, they shall know that they are my disciples because what? They have love one to another. Love one to another. Love is not a, it, it shows up in actions, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It doesn't show up in smile. I mean, it, it smiles and it's nice and stuff. But it's, it's, the, it's the actions that we take that really show the love that we have. Mm -hmm. It's a verb. And it's a verb. And it does things. Right. Amen. Yeah. So we could read 1 Corinthians 13 and talk about love. It's all these good things. Very similar to the, to the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Some of those are the same. They cross right back over and over. Yeah. And so uh, our 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 the mother in the church, the mother of the church, should be about nurturing people mm -hmm. to get them to love God mm -hmm. and to love one another mm -hmm. and to take care of one another. And I'm honestly, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, God, where am I? I I, I need to take a good look at myself uh, because the thing about church and religion is you can get real comfortable with your little routine right and then pretty soon you're so comfortable with your routine that you become like a pharisee and right. you don't care about the people no more mm -hmm. and god don't want that right he wants us to love one another right. and take care of one another that's right happy mother's day we do. to all of us men and women <laughs> yes we is the mother we is the mother of the kingdom Yes. We are the nurturers. We're going to take care of people. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. Some of you are going to take care of Nick. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or he right. won't make it. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course, Grandma's going to be there. Great Grandma's going to be there. Mm -hmm. I'll even drive him to work. <laughs> Every day. But there's others that are going to be involved too. Pray for him. Yes. Pray for God to continue to work, not only there, but in other places. Mm -hmm. right. And you know where they are in your lives. You know what they are. Mm -hmm. I just have one thing to say. You and Diane are the epitome of caregivers. Yeah. You are uh, a shining example. Uh, just taking care of me the way you have for two and a half years. But I appreciate you so much. Well, we just get, amen. We we appreciate you. Yeah. Amen. Uh, yes, we really do. Amen. Amen. Diane. Another yes. Baby. <laughs> yeah, we've been caretakers for a little while, huh? Well, yeah. your mother before I me. Does, and, right. I mean, it goes back a long ways. So. You take care of the kids and the yeah. grandkids. Yeah. And Linda. <laughs> yeah, Linda. Well, She's hopefully we take too. care of all of you. We love you all. Mm -hmm. Cliff and Pal, Bonnie, Tina, Coral. Everybody say, everybody say, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love you, Jesus. Jesus. Now, I want you to say, I love you, church. I love, I love, you, church. love you, church. Look around and say, I love you. 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 Too. Let's stand. And let's love him one more time. Thank you, Father.